So good afternoon everybody. My name is Monica Price and uh, I'm delighted to have David Macy here with me today who is the Provisional Grand Master for Warwickshire Freemasonry. Now if you don't know, uh, Freemasonry is actually one of the oldest and largest non-profitable and non-religious um, charitable organisations in the world. So it's wonderful that I get a chance to speak to David today. So David, good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. That's all right. How are you today? Splendid, thank you. Yes, we're coping. I'm getting out for walk down. regularly. <laughs> this is it. We're all sort of doing different things now, aren't we? We are indeed, yes. Oh, yeah. Well, it's wonderful that you could take some time to speak to me today, David. So, David, first of all, how long have you been a Freemason? Um, just over 30 years now, but I've been in charge of Freemasonry in Warwickshire for 10 years. Um, so I'm Provincial Grand Master, and that's a job you get for 10 years. And I should actually be finishing now in the lockdown period, but they've extended my term until we come out of lockdown. So I've got longer as a result. Oh, wow. And of course, I should imagine there'd be celebrations as well to be had when, once so, you uh, part ways. There were to be had. Yes, I'm missing all of them, unfortunately. Oh, this is it. You'll have, to, you'll, have to do a, you'll have to do it again once we're out of all this, which hopefully oh, yes. won't be too long. So, David, just tell me a little bit about what you're doing in Warwickshire, what Warwickshire and how, you know, how the COVID-19 has actually affected you as, a, as an organisation. Well, of course, um, once we went into lockdown, Freemasonry had to stop because we gather together in groups of about um, 20 or 30 or more people and those groups can't meet with, with the social distancing that we've got. Mm. And so Freemasonry has come to an end, but not the activities that we, we do within the community. And um, each year, Warwickshire Freemasons give £150,000 to non-Masonic charities. And we were to hold those check presentations two weeks ago, but we couldn't we just couldn't physically hold the presentation, so we've sent the checks out. But because of um, COVID-19, uh, and those, sorry, those checks go to all sorts of different institutions, food banks, um, we, we have them to hospices, to care homes, to all sorts of charities in our communities. And um, because of COVID-19, we, we found out that these charities needed even more of our help than normal. And um, they got in touch with us and we, we sort of rearranged our charitable giving that as well as the 150,000 that we've already sent out, we've put another 68,000 pounds into charities like, um, like food banks, like refuge centers, um, all sorts of charities are, are desperate for help at the moment. That's and incredibly generous, David. I mean, that's a, you know, that's a lot of money that will make a lot of difference because, as you said, food banks in particular have been very, very hard hit across the UK. So I should imagine they were extremely grateful any, for any help, both financially and you know, emotional support at this time. Well, it, it, that's very true. And, um, and of course, their fundraising activities have had to come to a stop. And so it's even more important that the money that we give to them, we're, we're giving next year's early, effectively. Um, but if we need to keep supporting them, then of course, we will. We, we will do that um, because we've got the facility to do it. And I'm very proud to be able to do that. And I mean, as, as far as a, an organisation is concerned, David, what sort of changes have you had to make because of the lockdown period? Obviously, you've said you obviously can't have your regular meetings that you normally hold. So how are you holding those? Are you getting together via, you know, the Internet? Are you having meetings like we're conducting this interview today? Well, yes, thank goodness for Zoom, I think. Oh. We're, we're, yeah. we're, keep, <laughs> we're keeping in touch with our members um, quite regularly. And... Um, uh, and yes, we're having we're having fun, but of course you can't do the real thing. But we're we're keeping in contact, and we're 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 still running things as best we can, um, particularly on 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 the charitable side, because we we know that that's exactly what we've got to do at this time. But um, we're all missing it like crazy, like we're missing all sorts of things. But this is a great alternative, and. Um, and we're using it to the full, yes. Yes, it's setting us new challenges, isn't it, on a daily basis? <laughs> yeah. uh, and now you're also doing, I mean, you work, you do some work with the University of Birmingham Hospitals, I believe, um, as, as well as the other work you've been doing. Are you doing anything particular with those? 
Yes, indeed. Uh, last year we, we were approached, uh, there's, Laura's got a fundraising team there and they're magnificent. And um, she approached us last year to help with um, two life supporting incubators for very, very um, prematurely born children. And so we provided two incubators at the cost of £40,000 last year to the University of Birmingham Hospital Trust. And so when this COVID-19 outbreak came about, Laura got in touch with us and said that they were desperate to get some communication in for patients um, who can't get visitors into the ward during this COVID-19 crisis. And so we asked, she asked us, if we could put some tablets in, not paracetamol, you know, electronic yeah, tablets. Electronic tablets, yes. <laughs> and um, she, she said, could we do it? Uh, and, um, well, to cut a very long story short, we got together with our colleagues, our Freemason colleagues in Worcestershire. We got some help from headquarters, our Masonic headquarters in London. And between the three of us, we put 150 tablets into University of Birmingham Hospitals Trust. And I'm delighted to say that because of Laura's help, um, they're actually in the wards now. These patients are actually communicating with us and saying thank you to us for getting this in. Oh, wow, because how Because they're now able to contact people and that, that means so much to them. Oh, it does, you know, and we've only had to uh, look at the media to know that when, if anybody, you know, was gravely ill and in those wards, you know, having that technology, having that communication yeah. by phone or tablet was absolutely critical, not only to their well-being, but also for the families that were outside, you know, desperate for information, of course, for the hospitals. That's, so that's a wonderful thing to have done. You must be very proud of that, David. I am very, very proud of it. And it just shows what you can do um, when you work together, not only with our colleagues in Worcestershire, but, but with Laura, because she had the ability to get these tablets quickly. As long as we could get her the money quickly, and Warwickshire ensured that we did that, and we'll, you know, we cope with the bureaucracy process to get it from elsewhere. But um, yes, we've got it done, and with Laura's help and the backing of, of all the Freemasons around here, we, we've made a difference, and um, uh, that, that's really very, very heartwarming. I'm very proud, yes, yes, very proud indeed. And when we come out of this, that'd be something really wonderful to look back on. And just remind us who Laura is, David. Is she, does she work for the University of Birmingham Hospitals? Laura heads the fundraising team at the University Hospital Trust, and um, she's a, a very delightful pest. She keeps them... <laughs> Keeps us on our toes, and I'm all, delighted. Yeah, as all good fund managers should be. <laughs> Indeed, yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's absolutely. lovely. And I mean, going forward, David, obviously you're doing an awful lot now, and and you're missing your meetings. You're, mi as you say, I mean, that's a massive ceremony when you deliver your checks to to the organisations that you've chosen to do so. So you know, as you've said, you know, you've kind of given this year's money and next year's money together to try and make a difference, really. But going forward, how do you see that COVID nineteen is actually going to affect the Freemasons? Do you think this will have a lasting impact on you? Um. Of course it will have an impact and it, 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 it would be very foolish to say it, it's not going to change the direction of where we're going, but it won't change our, our charitable giving. Um, we, we are just determined to keep um, helping the communities as much as we can, but we are ready. We are ready for the change. We are preparing for what we're going to do when we start to meet again and how we do that and all the things we've missed like the check presentations, like the celebrations, we'll do them, we'll do them, we, we, we'll always find time to do them. And um, uh, tomorrow's another day and we'll get on with that, but let's cope with the, 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 um, the trials and tribulations we've got to now because people need our help, don't they? They, really they certainly do. do, and we can have a big Christmas party. That's what I think. Absolutely. Have, yeah. have an amazing Christmas party. So, for the rest of your colleagues, David, obviously you're all keeping in contact via the internet and things. What other projects have you got coming up? That, you know, maybe that you planned for next year. Is there anything you'd like to talk about that you had planned, or something that's coming up that's, that you'd like to share with me? Well, um, in fact, of course, that's not my responsibility. It's my successors. So the big thing that we've got to, um, the big thing that I've got to plan, that my team have got to plan, 
is getting me replaced because my <laughs> term, as I say, yes. <laughs> comes to an end. <laughs> oh, you uh, must be very sad about that because you've been in the masonry, you know, for a long time, for a number of years, David. So, what are you going to do with yourself? Um, well, um, my wife isn't sad because it takes a lot of my time. But um, oh, I, I don't walk away from Freemasonry. Of course, I'll be there in the background trying to help. But um, it will mean that I'll, I'll give less time um, to Freemasonry and more to my wife. And I think she deserves it, to be honest. Oh, so absolutely. we're both looking forward to that. Yes, I can imagine. I can absolutely imagine. And I mean, Freemasonry, as I say, is, is one of the largest and the oldest in the world. David, do you think this, the Freemasons will continue to do exactly what they've always done for many, many years, you know, moving forward? Oh, yes, I, I think so. Out, out of this, we're, we're going to be even stronger than when we went into it. And people will understand that um, we, we've created an awful lot of bad press for ourselves in years gone by for whatever reasons. But I think we're showing now that Freemasonry working in the community is a force for good. And, um, uh, and we thoroughly enjoy it and we enjoy helping where we can. And um, when we come out of this, we'll be as strong as ever. And I, I'm looking forward to being part of that. Yeah, so I'm wonderful that you collaborated with Worcestershire on, you know, on the project that you were talking about with the tablets. And that's a really lovely thing. Do you think that will continue to do, you know, you'll continue to do that, David, looking forward? Oh, massively so. We, we work very, very closely together because um, areas of our, our area, our provinces, they're called overlap, you see. So, um, yes, we, we work um, closely together all of the time. And, and since um, this hospital was in both our territories, it, it was just common sense to work together. And we, we continue to do that. We get on very, very well indeed. Uh, uh, there's some rivalry, some friendly rivalry. Yeah, well, um, but, um, that's always a good thing to have, just a little bit oh, of yeah. rivalry. <laughs> well, David, it's been an absolute delight to speak to you today. Thank you so much. And, you know, with you. all the success with the with the hospital, um, you know, the, the thing that you did there was just incredible. And I'm sure that is being what used and people who are using it are extremely grateful for that. And uh, I wish you all the best with your retirement, as, uh, as you will be coming up very soon. But thank you for speaking. And I look forward to speaking to you again in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.